All right, today we are going to look at a new proof technique, the smallest counterexample. Now, the smallest counterexample is a type of proof by contradiction, right? So, how are we going to do a proof by smallest counterexample? Well, first, we have a claim if A, then B, right? And we're going to assume that there exists a smallest counterexample to the claim if A, then B, right? And then we're going to argue towards contradiction. And then if we get a contradiction, it means our supposition must have been false. So there does not exist a smallest counterexample, right? So there are no counterexamples. So the original statement was true to begin with, right? Now, this all seems a bit more complicated and tedious, um, but it actually proves to be pretty useful, right? Because let's look at something, right? Let's look at this fact that we've mentioned before. Every integer is even or odd, right? And we know that this is true, right? Think of an integer right now. It's even or odd. You can't think of a counterexample to this because there are no counterexamples, right? This is true, but we haven't proved it yet. Um, one case we looked at is we showed that um, what can't be true is every integer being even and odd, right? We showed that that cannot be the case in, um, I think, our proof by contradiction video, right? Well, one case we haven't looked at is um, an integer that is neither even or odd, right? So one that is not even and one that is not odd. And clearly that's false, right? There's no integer like that. But that's a case we still have to consider, right? We still have to prove it. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to show that that's not the case with natural numbers, right? And when we prove that about natural numbers, it'll make the proof for integers way easier. And we'll finally show that every integer is even or odd, right? So my first claim, right? My first claim is going to be about the natural number. So claim every natural number is even or odd. Right, and now we're going to do a proof of contradiction using our smallest counterexamples, right? So, suppose for the sake of contradiction, for the sake of contradiction, always important to include this at the beginning of your proof by contradiction, so your reader knows what you're going to get, what they're getting themselves into, right? So, suppose for the sake of contradiction, there exists. A, uh, or let's say, let's, let's suppose for the sake of contradiction that not all natural numbers are even or odd, right? And we've done the case already where we looked at it being both even and odd, so we're not going to do that, are even or odd. Then there exists a smallest natural number x. Look at that shorthand. There exists an X in the set of natural numbers. It means the same thing as there exists a uh, natural number X. A, oh, maybe I should write it in English just for this. Then there exists, there exists for this part right here, a smallest natural number X, natural number X, such that X is neither even, neither even, nor odd. I don't really know if I'm using nor correctly here, but we're going to hope I am. Now, actually, what I'm going to do real quick is write something that's false. See if you can catch the mistake, and then we're going to talk about it and correct it, right? So hold on, let me write this out real quick. All right, what's wrong here? Since x minus 1 is less than x, x minus 1 is a smaller natural number that is not a counterexample. Let's break it down real quick, right? Okay, let's look at all the words I said. X minus one is less than X. True. All right, because X is a, X is a zero or is greater than or equal to zero, right? Or, or just for any number, really. So X minus one is always less than X, right? All right. Um, so that must mean that X minus one is not a counterexample, right? That's true, because X is the smallest counterexample, right? So x minus 1 can't be a counterexample, because if it were, then x minus 1 would be the smallest counterexample, right? So x minus 1 is not a counterexample. 
x is a smaller natural number. Is it? Because what if x is 0, right? Then x minus 1 is negative 1, and is that a smaller natural number? No, right? Because negative 1 is not a natural number. Oh, okay, so we can't just be making claims like this willy-nilly. We gotta, we gotta cover our cases, right? So, hold on, let's do that real quick, right? So th it turns out that that statement would have been true if x is greater than or equal to 1, right? So let's look at something, right? Okay, let's go back to our white color. We're going to say, since 0 is even, x is greater than or equal to 1. There we go, right? And now we've covered our cases. So now we could say, then x minus 1 is less than x and not a counterexample. Now we can make that claim and not a counterexample. I just want to include that so you can show like how a little mistake like that, which doesn't seem like a mistake when you're writing it, actually is, right? So here we go. So x minus 1 is less than x and not a counterexample. Thus, x minus 1 is even or odd. And now we got to break our proof up into cases, right? We got to look at the case where x minus 1 is even. Hope we get a contradiction. Look at the case where x minus 1 is odd. Hope we get a contradiction. And if we've covered all cases, got a contradiction in all of them, then the entire, then we must have actually hit a contradiction and our supposition must be false. So let's do that, right? Let's look at our cases, right? Let's just scroll up, give us some more space, right? Let's say case 1. Say so case one, that is a terrible one. X is even, right? Or we'll say X minus one is even. X minus one is even. So if X minus one is even, then let's say X minus one equals two A for some A that's an integer, right? Now let's add one to both sides of the equation, right? So we'll say then x is equal to 2a plus 1. So x is odd, right? This is a contradiction, right? Because we said that x was a counterexample to our claim that every natural... Oh, I just totally realized that I wrote every natural is even or odd. I'm supposed to say every natural number here. Let's just put a little hashtag right there. Every natural number is even or odd. So x was supposed to be our counterexample, right? But we just showed that x was odd. So that's a contradiction. Can't be the case, right? All right, cool. Let's look at case two. Case two, x minus one is odd. You can see where I'm going with this. If x minus one is odd, then x minus one Oh god, why does that look like x equals 1? x minus 1 is equal to 2, let's just say b plus 1, for some integer b, right? And then we can just add 1 to both sides of the equation again, right? Then we'll say then x is equal to 2b plus 2, which is equal to 2 times b plus 1, right? Which is a contradiction, right? Because... 2 times b, b plus 1 is just some other integer c, right? So we have it equal to 2c, which is an even number, right? But we said that x here, let's write this. So, so x is even. So x is even. And again, we said that x is a counterexample to the claim that all natural numbers are even or odd, right? x was supposed to be neither even nor odd. And now we show that it can be even and that it can be odd. We've covered all of our cases, and in all cases, we've hit a contradiction, right? Which must mean, okay, let's write this out. Thus, our supposition is false. Our supposition is false. And remember, our supposition was that there exists a smallest counterexample, right? So if our supposition is false, then that means there doesn't exist a smallest counterexample. So, so every natural number... And this time I'll write number is even or odd. All right? And there we go. 
that's the end of our proof, right? Let's put a little square at the end to show that that's the end of the proof. That's a square. Um, and there you go. That was our proof using smallest counterexample. But now, I want to. I still want to prove this fact right here that every integer is even or odd. And I said we would do that, but first that we would show uh, that every natural number is even or odd because that would make the proof easier. So now we're going to show this. We're going to show that every integer is even or odd, right? And let's let's change up our colors. You know. For variety, let's go to, do you guys like blue? Let's look at some blue, right? So let's write this fact again. Every integer is even or odd. And we're going to break this up into cases, right? Or say, let x be an integer. Let x be an integer, right? If x is greater than or equal to zero, then the statement holds, right? Then the statement holds by the proof above, right? Because we had just proved that all natural numbers are even or odd, and if x is greater than or equal to zero, then and it's an integer, then it's a natural number. And we prove this, right? So if x is greater than or equal to zero, then the statement holds. I'm gonna say, now let's look at the case. Let's look at the case where x is less than zero. Then I'll say then negative x is yeah, let's say we'll say negative x is greater than zero. So negative x is even or odd, right? Does that make sense? Here, oh gosh, if only I could write, right? So right now x is gonna be a negative number. So negative x will be positive, right? Like, so if x is negative two, negative negative two is positive two, right? We want to make sure you understand. So negative x will be greater than zero. So we then if it's greater than zero, we know that negative x is even or odd, right? So let's break this up into cases, right? Case one. Negative x is even. Then negative x, and do you see where I'm going with this already? Equals 2a for some natural uh for some integer a. So negative x is equal to 2a, right? Then we'll say then x is equal to negative 2a, right? Multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1, which is equal to 2 times negative a. So x is even. Nice. There we go. We've showed that now x is going to be even. Now case 2, uh, negative x is odd, right? Then negative x is equal to 2b plus 1 for some integer b, right? Then x is going to be equal to, let's see, negative 2b minus 1, right? Multiplying both sides of the equation by 1. So then this can become, or let's write this out. Uh, so what, now what we have here is, let's write, which is equal to 2 times negative b, and then let's, let's just say minus 1. Now this isn't exactly in the form that I want. I, I would much rather have it be in the form like 2 times negative, 2 times some integer plus 1, right? And we can still get this, right? Because we could say that this is equal to 2 times negative b, I think, let's say, let's say minus 1, and then plus 1, right? Yeah. Do, uh, if you um, expand that equation, you'll see that this is, in fact, equal to that. Um, and there we go, right? So, so x is odd, right? And there we go. We've just covered our cases, right? And we've showed the case where x is greater than or equal to zero, that it's even or odd. When x is less than zero, it's even or odd, right? Thus, 
every integer, every integer is even or odd. Boom. There we go. See, that's, this is why I like discrete math so much. It takes facts that, that we take for granted, you know? A definition is about being even or odd. The fact that an integer is even or odd, facts that we just accept are true and shows you how to actually prove them. It's so, so cool. So if you made it to the end of this video and you found this as cool as me, you should definitely like the video and consider subscribing. Um, and I would greatly appreciate that. And thank you.